Good evening. You're watching the 7 o'clock English news from the South End of Oman Television. First, the headlines. A number of the South's governor rates witness rainfall for second consecutive day, and Willow of Iski records the highest rainfall. The first International Therapeutic Nutrition Conference discusses disease caused due to wrong nutritional practices. And the Santa hosts joint Afghanistan-Pakistan eminent ulama conference for supporting polio eradication. Those are the headlines and now the news in detail. A number of the Santa's governor rates witnessed very rainfall accompanied with wind as a result of the low pressure conditions which is currently affecting the Saltet. The effects of this weather condition included the governorates of Muscat, Wahira, Baremi, Dakhiliya, North and South Sharqiya, with expectation of rainfall quantity of 30 to 75 millimeters. The weather condition will start to weaken gradually from tomorrow morning, affecting the coastal area of the Arabian Sea with varied rains. The governorate of Musandam, with its uh, four wilayas, witnessed moderate to heavy rains, causing Daba Dam to be full of water for the first time. Heavy rains caused wadis to overflow in the governorate of North and South al -Bathna. Some wilayas of the governorate of Muscat also witnessed moderate to heavy rains, and the governorate of Bahira also witnessed heavy rains that caused wadis to overflow, such as Wadi Ain. People in the governorates of Dakhliya received uh, with happiness, rains that fell in some of its wilayas like Bahla, Iski, Manah, Nizwa, Samail, and Bidbid that caused wadis in these wilayas to overflow. Wilayas of Sur in the governorate of North Sharqiya also witnessed heavy rains that caused some wadis, such as Wadi Tri and Wadi Bani Jabir, to overflow. The rainfall quantities recorded during the last 24 hours in some monitoring stations of the Public Authority for Civil Aviation varied rates in different wilayas. The wilaya of Iski in the government of Dakhliya witnessed the highest rainfall, a rate with 52.6 millimeters, while the rainfall quantity of Sikh amounted to 52.2. In Nizwa, the rainfall reached 46 millimeters, while Deba in the Governorate of Musandam recorded 42.8 millimeters. Shinas in the Governorate of North Bathna recorded 38.4 of rainfall, while the Wilaya of Bahla in the Governorate of Dakhliya reached 30.8 millimeters. Still to come, news bulletin. The JEDEX and Trinex exhibitions start at Oman Conventions and Exhibitions Center. Why is competition good for businesses? Businesses compete in things like price, quality and service to win new customers who could be other businesses as well as consumers. Being competitive can mean more customers choose you rather than your rivals. But when businesses collude and don't compete, this can lower down the quality and service and the consumers paying more than they should. This is an unlawful practice and can stop consumers from getting more options on goods and services with better quality and better prices. That's why the Competition Protection and Monopoly Prevention Law was issued to regulate the freedom of practicing any economic activities and stabilize the principles of the market rules and freedom of pricing in such manner that the same shall not restrict competition, prevent the same or be negatively affected, thereby to benefit consumers, businesses and the national economy. Breaching any of the law's clauses could lead to prison sentences and fines up to 100,000 Omani reals. The punishment can also include paying 10% of the total annual sales of the products subject of the violation as well as damage to the business's reputation. Help us in preventing anti-competitive activities by contacting the following numbers. And to know more about the law and the prohibited activities, please visit our website, www.cmc.om.
Competition Protection and Monopoly Prevention Center. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. The first international conference for therapeutic nutrition discussed diseases contracted due to some kind of food, consuming them in an unhygienic way, and the repercussions of these diseases. The conference also reviewed following wrong practices, such as taking overdose and unauthorized consumption of antibiotics, which will affect the stability of beneficial bacteria in human bodies. The conference witnessed the participation of experts from inside and outside the center. The Joint Afghanistan-Pakistan Eminent Ulama Conference for Supporting Polio Eradication, hosted by the Sultan, commenced today in Muscat under the auspices of His Excellency Dr. Darwish bin Saif al Maharbi, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health, uh, for Administration and Financial Affairs. More report with Abdullah bin Ahmed Arubay. <laughs> The two-day conference, which hosted by the Sultanate, represented by the Minister of Health, is organized by the Islamic Advisory Group for Polio Eradication from Al-Azhar al-Sharif, Dar al-Ifta, Egypt, Dar al-Ulum, Dioband, the Organization of the Islamic Cooperation, and the Islamic Development Bank. The conference touches upon the current situation and challenges of polio eradication, the composition of oral poliovirus vaccines, the root causes behind refusals, the vaccine and other. His Excellency Under Secretary of Financial Affairs in the Minister of Health welcomed in his speech the religious scholars and doctors participating in the conference and stressing the importance of health in development and growth of the communities in the world. Sheikh Kahlan al Kharusi affirmed the importance accorded by the Islam to the health and care to raise the individuals and maintain the Muslims' generations in terms of healthy and strong builds. He highlighted the importance of community cooperation for the benefit of the human beings, communities and nations. This is the uh, joint uh, Afghani-Pakistani ulama conference. Um, this meeting is designed uh, to have a contribution of these ulama in the fight against poliomyelitis. You know, this disease is now just uh, present in these two countries. So um, the uh, IAG, Islamic Advisory uh, Group, organized this meeting to uh, have a clear discussion about how to tackle the problems facing the program of polio eradication in these two countries and hopefully will come with a declaration where these uh, ulama are committed to help in the fight against poliomyelitis in these two countries, Afghanistan and Pakistan. His Excellency Dr. Ahmed al Mandari, WHO Regional Director for the Eastern Mediterranean Region, stressed that polio is crippling diseases that paralyzes children without the possibility of treatment. He said in the past, around 1,000 children around the world were affected by the disease every day. But with the development of a safe vaccine that was used to vaccinate every child worldwide, we have succeeded in bringing polio to the brink of eradication. A 99.9% .9 decline in polio cases has already been achieved since the Global Polio Eradication Initiative was launched in 1988. Over 1.5 million child deaths have been averted through the administration of vitamin A during polio vaccination campaign. He added, we have witnessed only nine polio cases so far this year, three in Afghanistan and six in Pakistan. He also added, the ministers of health of the 22 countries of the region express concern about the persistence of polio in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Therefore, the gathering here is to explore how the joint forces and guidance can help the Muslim Ummah and polio in Afghanistan and Pakistan and thereby the world. Abdullah bin Ahmed al Rubi, Sultanate of Oman Television, Masqat. 
The annual regular meeting of Oman Iranian Military Friendship Joint Committee started in Muscat today. The meeting discussed a number of topics listed in the agenda which will contribute in strengthening cooperation ties existed in the military fields between both friendly countries. The meeting also reviewed aspects of the activities and events of the committee. The Omani side was chaired by Brigadier General Hamed bin Rashid Al Blushi, Assistant of Chief of Staff of Sultan's Armed Forces for Operations and Planning, while the Iranian side chaired by Brigadier General Dr. Qadir Nitham, Assistant Chief of Staff for International Affairs. Discussing matters of common concern between the Sultanate and Kingdom of Bahrain topped the meeting of the Rear Admiral Abdullah bin Khamis al Raisi, Commander of the Royal Navy of Oman, with Colonel Barak Ali al Subah, com Commander of Combined Task Force CTF 152 in Bahrain. Colonel Mbarak uh, Ali al Subah, Commander of uh, Combined Task Force in Bahrain, visited the Marine Security Center. He was uh, briefed about the tasks and roles of the Marine Security Center, representing in management and leadership of marine security operations against marine dangers, such as rescue and searching operations, preserving marine environment from various dangers and roles of coordination centers between Sultan's armed forces and security bodies with other civil institutions in the Sultanate. With the participation of more than 200 universities, GADEX and TRAINEX exhibitions, started at Oman Convention and Exhibitions Center. The exhibition focused on the quality of higher education, providing modern tools and education solutions, where exhibition of technical education and vocational training, Trainex provided a number of training opportunities and professional courses to develop local manpower in the Sultan, in addition to determine the vocational path for youths. The exhibition also provided for graduates and professionals the opportunities in educational fields which helped to uplift the skills. The exhibition aggression ceremony was presided over by His Excellency Dr. Abdullah bin Mohammed Al Sarmi, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Higher Education. And on the sideline of GADEX and the Tronex exhibition, Petroleum Development Oman PDO signed two memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Higher Education to qualify 50 students from concession areas to become instructors to work in the schools, at their cities and villages. The Ministry of Higher Education signed also with PDO an agreement of financing 150 scholarships for students of concession areas within the program of scholarships for the domestic society. The MOU signing came within the framework of the Tautin program, which is aimed to provide Omani teachers in the villages in order to contribute in developing the qualifying education process and provide job opportunities. Sultan Qabush University and uh, Jusor Orpik Company signed a cooperation program aimed to partially finance the project of establishing innovation and technology transfer center in the university. The program came within the framework of the strategic orientation towards improving innovation industry in the Sultan and support innovators of Omani youth in addition to find encouraged environment to adopt the innovations in order to enhance contribution of innovation in the national economy with valued products. And finally, Citroën CV Cars of France toured around Oman, where they concluded their journey last week after crossing over 3,000 kilometers. More details and full report by Brother Bay. 
successful tour by a French group uh, on a Citroën 2CV cars that concluded last week have had an unforgettable experience in the Sultanate. A team of 60 drivers and co-drivers with a 32CV Citroën Classical car crossed over 3,000 kilometers around Oman's beautiful mountains and reached to one of the highest mountainous peaks in Alhambra that has special cool breeze around attractful Kenyans. The journey of which entailed adventurous experiences. This organization organizes a rally every two years in a, in a faraway country. Two years ago I think they were in Brazil. This time they, they decided to come to Oman. And I think this is a great one more thing to do to, for the public, French public to discover Oman. Uh, Oman offers lots of different landscapes, so it's, uh, it's a fantastic uh, place to organize uh, automobile rallies. And, um, but they also were uh, serious about their, their, their duties because they took the opportunity to clean some beaches on the way. So it's, uh, it's, it's a responsible uh, rally. So I think it, it's interesting also for Omani public, and there are a few Omanis today, because this car is not known here and it's, uh, it's a little uh, whiff of France in the Sultanate. I'm uh, absolutely uh, honored and pleased to be here. I'm very, very proud of the Dutch team uh, who has participated in the, in the race. And uh, I know these cars, they are really uh, very sturdy and I'm sure that they uh, did well in the, in the Omani desert and in Omani mountains and also the coastal roads. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We enjoyed ourselves and we still enjoy ourselves. I'm joining Mr. Frederick right now to enter the racing field to experience the, the, the driving of the, this uh, old-fashioned car and hopefully we'll get a good experience from it. Uh, I'm happy to join uh, Hamed uh, in order to do this race. During their tours, uh, drivers have attracted different people with their stylish classic Citroën cars before concluding their adventurous journey in Oman. The symbol of the French way of life, the legendary car was uh, created in 1949 by Citroën, a famous French car manufacturing company. The car was just like incredible. They hide and climb Wadi Badiaf, there was in the desert, and it's it really was amazing. We really enjoyed it, everybody was very happy. So th this is my first raid, and uh, I've met people from lots of European countries. I did know some of the people before coming, but there are Belgians, Dutch, Austrians, Swiss, uh, and many French, uh, and we've made good new friends. Uh, the country's been amazing, fantastic scenery, uh, the people have been friendly everywhere. I'm the general manager of M&N &M Tour. We are the organizer of these events. We made two years of preparation with the French team Red 2CV Oman, and we did all the tour, uh, all the places that we wanted them to visit because we love this country so much that we really wanted them to come and do a really excellent tour. Their tour was organized by the Ministry of Tourism and the route was arranged by Nabhan and Nabhani, a former Omani international rally driver. The team enjoyed their time while experiencing Omani heritage, culture and hospitality. Indeed, having this Citroën here in the Sultanate of Oman is one uh, way of exchanging culture between the Sultanate and France. Abdullah bin Ahmed al Sultanate of Oman Television, Muscat. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we're in tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. The number of the Sultan's governor rates witness uh, rainfall for second consecutive day and the Wilawi Iski records the highest rain rate. The first international therapeutic nutrition discusses diseases caused due to the wrong nutritional practices. And the Sultan hosts joined Afghanistan Pakistan eminent Ulama conference for supporting polio eradication. And with that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin from all of us here in the newsroom and the studios. Thanks for watching. Good night.